Hey, all my automation loving sysadmins, it's Lex from PDQ.com. I'm gonna take you through ways to find when you end up getting error codes for your deployments. And these are Microsoft system error codes. Again, error codes can be vendor specific, but a lot of times, you know, when you're seeing system error codes, they're Microsoft. So I just searched, I Googled Microsoft error codes. And here comes up the doc for the error codes. It's kind of broken down into, you know, zero through 500 or 499, five, at any rate. Um, so this is where I go to look to find what's going on, what kind of error codes come up. Now, I'm gonna take you through three or four of the most common ones that you're gonna see that, you know, again, you're probably gonna need. So um, wonderful thing is you just give it a little control F here. We're gonna search for the first one I see often is 128. And uh, yeah, let's, oh, I actually got to get in here, 014 or uh, 449. Now let's go find that error code 128. 128, there are no child processes to wait for. That one you generally see if you're doing a task kill and uh, the process isn't running. So you're trying to task kill something that's not even running. So again, error 128, that's one you're going to want to add in as a success code if you're doing a task kill. Uh, another really popular one, and uh, when I say really popular, I mean you'll see it fairly often, is a 1603. The problem, it's really kind of vague. There you go. 1603, fatal error during installation. That doesn't give me a whole lot to go on. But you'll see that a lot of times. Most of the time, uh, usually what I do is I'll reboot the machine and rerun the install to see if that clears it up. Maybe there's an install running, something like that. But 1603 is one you're going to see a lot of, and it's kind of a generic catch-all. So, uh, speaking in the 1600s, let's look at a 1641. 1641, the requested operation completed successfully, which is a good thing. It's not a zero error code because the system needs to be restarted. So, again, you know, your Windows updates, you're going to see those. Sometimes your uh, Windows Office installs, you'll see that. Uh, along that same lines, another one you're probably going to see when it requires a reboot is a 3110, which again, I need to get into the 3000s here. Boom, 3000s, 30, or excuse me, 3010. Requested operation successful changes will not take effect until the next reboot. So these are some error codes you're going to see that you don't want to put in the success line on your, um, let's just take a look at 7-zip here. Uh, again, on the installs, success codes go right there. So see 1641, 3110. Again, those mean that it ran fine. It just needs a reboot. So again, a couple things to take away from this uh, when you're looking for error codes. Again, Google system error codes or vendor error codes specifically. And uh, the find works great as long as you're in the right section like uh, I showed you. I didn't do that a couple times, but... That's where you find them. Uh, again, this will help you know point you in the right direction in regards to whether or not you need to add it as a success code or you need to troubleshoot what's actually going on with that. So thanks for watching. I'm Lex from PDQ.com.